Hey guys, Jordan here. In this video, we're gonna be talking about flash triggers. So let's get into it. All right, so if you like real estate photography or wanna learn about it, make sure to subscribe to my channel as I consistently put out videos, daily videos, all about real estate photography and I respond to your guys' comments and questions. Today's uh, video comes from a comment from Kyle Schwartz on a video I made, one 8200 and one Godox or more speed lights in real estate photography. I talked a little bit about lighting in that video. If you haven't seen it, the link will be in the description below. He says, how do you trigger the flash? So um, triggering the flash uh, is typically done with a flash trigger unless you have a top mount flash, which I, I, I just have uh, some examples of flash triggers here. This is my Nikon setup. And yeah, this is this. I really like this flash trigger. I use it with uh, Godox. I use primarily Godox flashes, um, but depending on the technology and what they use, you can use um, other types of triggers to trigger different kinds of. Um, I, I think these ones are 2.4 uh, Hertz or something. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but typically when you buy a flash, it comes with a trigger. So if you buy a newer, a newer, oh yeah, here we go. 2.4 gigahertz. So this is a small flash trigger that comes with a newer flash. I think this came with, and, and actually I'll probably link to it in the description below. This is a very inexpensive flash. I think it's somewhere around 200 bucks and I think it's, uh, $200 for, I think it's a 200 watt. Uh, or equivalent flash and it's pretty good for an entry-level flash this flash trigger right here is the newer VC 818 TX uh, 2.4 gigahertz I think these ones are all 2 point here's another one that I have some of these I've had to modify for different things um, yeah because if they have all these pins on the bottom you can't do bracketed shots you got to do it single exposure at a time at least for Sony um i think maybe they maybe they updated that where you can conti do continuous brackets uh using ttl pins or maybe turn it off but yeah ttl is a great way for your camera to kind of control the flash itself based on the settings that you put in your camera so it's it's very nice if you don't know much about what you're doing and want to adjust your flash from shot to shot which i typically do like to do that i usually like to shoot on manual so Anyways, yeah, I have a whole bunch of these Godox. I keep an extra one just in case one goes on a go bad. And this is my Canon setup, which doesn't get enough love these days. This is the EOS R. But yeah, I have the same Godox. Now you do have to get, if you go with this type of flash trigger, which which one is this one? This one's my go-to. Let me tell you which one it is. This is the Godox X Pro trigger. So they have an S right here or they have an N on this one for Nikon or a C for a Canon. They have different style pins because different manufacturers have different um, design um, things. But man, this is kind of a reminder that I need to shoot more with Nikon and, and Canon. I give, I like to shoot with all different kinds just to kind of get a feel for the, the capabilities of, of the cameras and just to know their performance. Um, but having tested them, a great all-around camera that we're using currently right now is the Sony a7 IV from a price, value, quality, video photos. Um, that's what we like to shoot with um, currently. So anyways, yeah, but this video, yeah. So a bunch of, so a flash trigger is what you need to uh, trigger a flash. And I think sometimes you can use a even a flash to trigger other flashes. There's like slave modes. There's a bunch of different modes. And I can go over that and kind of go through the different flash. I'm just thinking through my head if you need a further explanation around flashes. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, your, your flash trigger has to be on the same channel as your flash. Um, man, I remember the first uh, wireless flash that I used. It was very complex. It wasn't as easy as this. I used an Alien B. It was like a 1600 watt Alien B for like exteriors. And it was very heavy, it had a huge external battery pack. But, anyways, from a flash standpoint, I like the 8600. I think I have the 400, the 300, the 200. I feel like I have all the Godox. I like, I like Godox. It's a great brand. Definitely not sponsored. I spend a lot of money on Godox equipment. I just think it's a, they, they make a solid product. 
And Godox also, there's a couple other brands that are basically the same manufacturer, just called something differently. I can't remember exactly which ones they are, but um, yeah, there are some other alternatives. But the pricing perspective is typically around the same. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video. If you got value, hit the like button and we'll see you guys on the next one.